I bet Steven Spielberg never has to deal with this nonsense. This is an absolute beast of a cable. <laughs> G'day and welcome back to Steve's Tesla. You will no doubt be aware that the Australian Federal Government has an initiative to install high-speed electric vehicle chargers all around the country so that you never have to travel more than 150 kilometres on a main highway to be able to recharge your car. Over Christmas, Australia's electric vehicle drivers discovered there aren't enough chargers. As we get more and more EV sales into Australia, that'll get worse unless we act. Tonight, work has begun on a key election commitment to install fast chargers every 150 kilometres along major highways. This guarantees you won't run out of battery. Wherever you are on the National Highway Network, there'll be a charger there to top you up. There are operational chargers in the main cities and roads people use during holidays. But this is the plan. The whole country connected, linking Adelaide to Darwin. Darwin, Perth to Broome, Brisbane to Alice Springs, wherever you want to go, even if it's remote. The opposition welcomes the acceleration of electric vehicles, but... It has to be done sensibly, and ultimately we have to respect consumer choice. We're not forcing people to buy EVs, we're giving people real choices. The New South Wales government, as part of its contribution towards this national initiative, are scrapping the electric car purchase incentives, but increasing funding for charging infrastructure. The New South Wales government is pledging to increase the number of electric vehicle chargers from 1,000 to 30,000. Charging hubs will be installed in council car parks and near train, bus and ferry stations, as EVs are set to make up to 50% of new car sales by 2030. And under the plan, strata laws will also be reformed to make it easier for apartment owners to install their own chargers. The New South Wales Premier, Chris Minns, claimed recently that the government's $3,000 subsidy is pushing up the cost of electric vehicles, as car companies are reportedly increasing prices to maximise profit from the in-demand vehicles. The first of the new electric vehicle chargers have been installed in my region, so I thought I'd take the opportunity of going and testing out these chargers to see how well they work, but also get up to the Everything Electric show in Sydney and just talk to a few car manufacturers and find out whether their prices are coming down as a consequence of the subsidy being reduced. At the Everything Electric show in Sydney, we took an MG4 electric vehicle out for a test drive and also spent some time talking to the marketing people on the stand, particularly about pricing and how the removal of the subsidy had affected the price of the car. Okay. Right, so it's still 39000 yeah, plus 3000 3, is the honour. So any car will be $3,000. Yeah. So there 30... was a subsidy before, mm -hmm. which was about 3000 so you actually took 3000 off of it. You basically drove away from the price of the... Yeah, the car. The car. So that 38000 was the drive away price, even okay. though we were saying it wasn't. It was because the government subsidy covered the gap. Okay. But now yeah. they've taken it, they took it away in January. So that I can test the new EVX chargers, it was necessary to purchase a Type 2 cable, as my Tesla doesn't come with one of these. This was about $300 on the Tesla website. I know I'll be able to make good use of this when I'm travelling around the countryside. The EVX phone app is much like the other charger apps and was easy to set up and add a credit card so that I can pay for my charging sessions. The map within the app has all of the EVX charger locations in my region. Interestingly, when I looked on PlugShare, they hadn't yet been uploaded. There is also a help section on the app and answers to some frequently asked questions. One of the new EVX chargers is in Railway Parade in Thoreau, and so we drove around there just to have a look. It was interesting to see the setup, and the charger was in use. I noticed there's a two hour time limit on parking if you're an electric vehicle. While we were there, a couple turned up in their BMW and I did point out to them that parking was for electric vehicle charging only. They genuinely had thought this was a disabled park as the driver had a disabled sticker and it did make me realise that the signage for the electric vehicle parking and a disabled sign are very similar at first glance. 
we decided to check out a couple more locations because we wanted to see just where these chargers have been installed. So we went to George Street in the middle of Wollongong. We were able to plug in and use the app to start charging and it showed it was charging at 11 kilowatts giving another 2 hours and 40 minutes to take it from 64% to 100%. It wasn't our intention to charge to full though, we really just wanted to test the facility and see where the location was, which turns out to be not far from the Woolworth supermarket. I bet Steven Spielberg never has to deal with this nonsense. This is an absolute beast of a cable. <laughs> I'm to wrap it up again. Deary me. I'll come up with a better system. We decided to go to George's Place just off Cliff Road and then walk down to the Novotel and have a drink while we left the car on charge for an hour or so. The EVX chargers have these cable hooks so that you can remove any trip hazard for pedestrians. Also the plugs can't be unplugged from the charger or from your vehicle while the charging process is in operation. They only unlock when you stop the charger and release them using the app on your phone. In the hour or so we were at the Novotel, the range increased from 64% to 81%, which in the case of my Tesla Model Y, adds about 60 kilometres. For our final test, we headed out the next day to Headlands Hotel for lunch, and as the EVX charger was available, we decided to use that for a little while. So as a matter of courtesy, let's not do something as stupid as that. I'm going to coil it up and leave it so it's lying on the ground. As it turned out, the EVX charger was not actually operational. We tried both ports. So I helpfully sent off a short message to the support team and their automatic reply said they would reply within one or two business days, which did make me think, what would I do if I'd completely exhausted my battery? However, within an hour or so, they responded to say they'd resolved the problem, and they do have 24 by 7 monitoring, so they were aware of the problem in advance. So there's a few things to remember from this exercise. Firstly, the New South Wales government intends to increase the number of EV chargers from 1,000 to 30,000. So we are going to see these things everywhere, not dissimilar to what I saw in London a few years ago, where virtually every power pole had an EV connector. I decided to helpfully write a letter to Chris Minns and just explain that, from our observations, prices of electric vehicles have not yet fallen as a result of removing the car purchase subsidy. The new EVX chargers are certainly functional and for someone who doesn't have off-street parking or home charging, they're going to be really useful. However, an electric vehicle is going to need four to six hours charging on one of these things to get a decent level of charge, and the parking permissions are only for two to three hours. So my recommendation is to either install faster charges or allow for longer parking periods. In addition, the disabled signs and the electric vehicle parking signs look very similar, and I would recommend that the parking EV signs be changed to green, for instance. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. G'day, and welcome to Steve's Tesla. This is my channel dedicated to electric vehicles and renewable energy. Subscribe now, and let's drive.